Hey guys, I got some real cool locks in from China. They're called the Uema 750 series locks. And I actually saw a really cool video on YouTube recently from a channel called Lock Tech Inc. Uh, it's just LTI, that's their name on YouTube. And I'll post their, their videos in the description below. So they have some uh, cutaways and some really cool diagrams. So uh, click on those links to, uh, to see the, the guts and the heart of this lock. Uh, in my video today, I'm just gonna go over the, the padlock and the disc lock in different sections, just talk about just overall how they work and give you a demo. So yeah, I'll get started. All right, you guys, here's the UMS 750 50mm padlock, and it's got a pretty nice build, weighs a little bit over 350 grams, and a cool design. So the main security feature of this lock, though, is its core. It's got a special core, the UMS 750 patented core, and it's got a slider mechanism, and you can see it really looks like a face <laughs> when we zoom in. And uh, those teeth that you see, those two rows of teeth, those are the sliders. And those are going to follow the tracks on the key uh, here, uh, the top and the bottom tracks. And you can see how that fits just like this. So as soon as I insert the key, those sliders are going to be, be moving like back and forth to their correct positions. And if you watched, or if you're going to watch the uh, Loctec Inc. video that I've linked in the description, you'll know that this is a split core. There's a front section of the core and there's a back section of the core and they are totally independent and they're not connected. So if I were to stick a tension wrench in here to try to tension the lock, you're gonna notice that it just keeps spinning. And that obviously is a defense against picking because you can't just use a standard lock pick set. If you're gonna try to pick this, you're gonna need to have a special tool or get creative. And uh, you know, most people who are going to be thieves will not have those tools or that knowledge. So that's cool. And uh, if you were to insert an incorrect key, you'll notice it'll also keep just spinning. Uh, so yeah, the two halves of the core will not become one. They will not uh, work together until you insert the correct key, which I have here, which allows a sidebar to fall in and connect the two halves. And once those two halves are connected, you could rotate it, activate, the locking mechanism and unlock the lock. So that's how the core works. Again, please see the really cool detailed video that I've linked in my uh, video description below. Uh, you know, one thing you'll realize if you're looking closely is that there's only one cut here on the shackle. And that means that there's only one locking dog and you could already tell it is not a ball bearing mechanism. So. Uh, you know, when I got this lock, I was like, oh, that's, you know, disappointing because such a cool, um, core, but if you look here, you're like, whoa, that, that, uh, gap is huge and you, this could probably easily be shinned, but I found that that is not the case because it has an interesting, way of preventing shimming and I will do that in the next section and show you that this actually is not easily shimmable and maybe not shimmable at all. I'll just give my best shot and you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so I'm gonna try to shim this lock now, but before I do, let me just show you inside once more. Um, here, you're gonna see that there is a kind of like a spring-loaded latch, right? And when I push it down, it'll stay down. Almost similar to like when you put push it down with the shackle, it'll stay down, right? But uh, when you open the lock, it the locking dog moves out of the way and it'll pop up, right? And this is more or less a dead latch. And what a dead latch it does is that when it's pushed down into this position here, right? Let's say the key is out of the lock, sorry. When it's pushed down, let's pretend like the shackle is pushing this down, the uh, locking dog here will pop out. And if you want to shim it, shimming basically is the, the action of, let me zoom in, get this out of the way, sorry. Okay, so it's basically the action of pushing this locking dog spring-loaded 
in to clear the, uh, the indentation on the shackle. And you'll notice that when I try to push it in, it doesn't go. It's not, if I, w if I was truly shimming this, this, remember this latch would pop up as in similarly to if we insert the correct key and turn the cylinder, but you'll see it is not going. However, if we insert the correct key and turn it, you see it'll pop up, you push it down, and you'll notice the locking dog is fully retracted. So you'll, that is basically uh, the mechanism it, this uses to prevent shimming. So let's put that in action here. Remember, we only need one shim because there's nothing to shim on this side. So oh, we don't need the two shim method. So let me get in there and try to fit this shim in that huge, massive gap. All right, so let's push that in as far as we can go. So that is more or less centered on that spring-loaded uh, locking dog, and that's as far as I can push it in. <laughs> and if we try to pull it, you'll notice because that dead latch is preventing that spring-loaded locking dog from being pushed all the way in, it is still caught on the indentation of the shackle and <clears throat> prevents shimming. So, uh, yeah, at first glance, that looks easily shimmable, but uh, in my experience, I have not been able to do it, and it looks like a pretty clever design. I don't know why they didn't use just a ball bearing, but hey, it works, so cool. Not shimmable, at least in my experience. So yeah, uh, I'll move on to the disc brake lock in the next section. All right, you guys, so here's the motorcycle disc brake lock version. Uh, this has a very important difference than the padlock that I wanna talk about. But first, let me just go over the lock body here. It weighs around 550 grams. Got a cool, shiny, sleek design that I like. Around a 60 millimeter throat depth and a six millimeter gap height. So uh, that's gonna fit on most motorcycles just fine. Here's the rotating weather cover. It's gonna protect from mud and dirt and rain, so that's cool. However, please be aware that this version is not the 360 degree spinning uh, version. So here are the two cores side by side just so you could compare, but this will not uh, spin if you put tension on it. So if you put tension just like this, it's gonna tension just like any other lock. If you put the incorrect key, that's just gonna act like any other lock with the incorrect key. So again, please be aware, not all 750 series UAM locks will spin even though they have a very similar looking core and key. Um, so yeah, please double check if that's something you need. It works just like any other disc brake lock though. You can see that the shackle pops down if you wanna lock it up, just like that. Um, Still a cool lock. I still recommend it. it's higher security than a lot of uh, disc brake locks out there. So uh, yeah, you know, these, these locks are cool for the collection and they're cool for everyday use. I only have a couple of them right now, so I'm going to put them in my store if you want them. Uh, if I sell out, please just send me a message. And as always, I will do my very best to fulfill your request. So yeah, see you next time, guys. Thanks for watching.